So we're going to build the commit single enlistment TX.exe. Then we're going to run it. You can see it gives us the instruction. Then it's asking for us to set breakpoints. Then it tells us that commit transaction async was called and commit complete was called. But actually, nothing was done because we haven't modified the code. So what we're going to do is we're going to set the breakpoints in WinBag. For this three function. And we're going to rerun the binary. So here we can see tm create enlistment is called. It's because the code is already here. But it's based passing and handle that is invalid. And that's all it, it hits. So what we're going to add now is a call to create transaction. So create transaction takes several arguments. You can see the LP transaction attribute is optional and null can be passed. The second argument is reserved and sh should be zero. Create option is optional as well. We don't really need to promote anything here. Isolation level is zero. Isolation flag is zero. Timeout is optional. So we can specify zero to provide an infinite timeout and description is optional. So basically we can pass zero or null to most of the arguments. So the handle to the transaction is called HTX. So we're going to pass null, null, zero, 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 and null. We're going to try rebuilding that and see if we hit create transaction. So we need to exit the binary to be able to push the binary. And now let's run it. So we haven't hit any breakpoint yet. When I hit enter, you can see it hits create transaction. Then it hits create enlistment and that's all. So now what we want to do is we want to add a call to commit complete. So commit complete takes an argument to the enlistment handle and a virtual clock. The virtual clock, if you specify null, the virtual value is not changed. So we're just going to call commit complete on the enlistment handle and null. We exit the binary and rebuild it. Now we're going to run the binary. See it hasn't hit the breakpoint yet. We hit enter. We see it created the transaction. It created the enlistment. And then it commit complete the enlistment. Okay, so now we have a working binary, you can debug it. So I have actually reverse engineered the functions related to the three breakpoints that we have defined. So just to give you a quick overview, what you need to do is basically define the arguments of the function. Um, see that some, some function is being called to actually retrieve an object related to a handle, then create the object. All these functions are well known and can be defined. So every, everything is defined in, in Ghidra. The second one is create an instant X, same thing, arguments, and ob reference object by handle. So we can see the, fun the same functions are called in all the functions. So once you've defined it once, it will propagate to the other functions, which is very handy.
And finally, the commit complete enlistments with the arguments. OK. So now we are ready. And we can actually debug it. So we are now ready to debug the creation of the transaction, the creation of the enlistments, and the change of state for the enlistments. We're going to analyze the K transaction structure as well as the K enlistment structure. We can see in the debugger that nothing hit yet. We've pushed the binary already and we're going to execute it now. So nothing hit in the debugger. We're going to start creating the transaction by hitting enter. Now we hit the NT create transaction X function. If we look in Ghidra, we're going to skip all the code that actually does all the checks for the arguments. We see that there is um, the curation of the object for the transaction here. And we see that after that, it's actually initializing the transaction. So we're going to set a breakpoint on this tm initialize transaction function because it's passing the tx object and we want to see how it's populating the object. So we use control F2. We see that it's actually setting a breakpoint in WinBag. So we hit that breakpoint. So in the first argument, we should have a transaction object. So for now we can see it's actually not in slide. The cookie is not valid. This entry is not valid. So we're going to step over that call. Print it again. So now we can see the cookie is valid. Um, it actually has a grid. The enlistment head is empty at the moment. The state of the transaction is active. It doesn't have any enlistment. It doesn't point to any transaction manager. The outcome of the transaction is undetermined. So the next thing we can check is if it actually evolves over time. So we're going to set the breakpoint after the insert object with control F2 and then continue execution. OK, so here it's telling us that it wasn't able to set the hardware breakpoint due to too many breakpoints. So we can actually delete the number three and continue execution. So now we can check that it's still the same. I'm mostly interested to know if the, it's going to initialize the TM inside. But I guess it doesn't look like it's the case. Just going to step over that call and then check again. Right. You know, it's not updating the TM yet at that state. So, yeah. So we've analyzed the transaction when NT create transaction is called. So now we continue execution and we hit the NT create enlistment function. So the NT create enlistment function is going to actually retrieve the transaction and then create the enlistment. So we're going to set a breakpoint on the create enlistment function with control F2. And then we need to delete the previous breakpoint. So we're going to continue execution. So here we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So on the stack. So on the stack, we see this is the RM object.
you can see the resource manager is online, the cookie, as well as the fact that the TM points to a valid TM. So here you can actually click here to see it at the K transaction manager, KTM. So you can see it's a cookie, the KTM is online, the transaction manager is online. And then we know the second or the th sixth argument is going to be a transaction. So this is the actual transaction we had before, right? So we can confirm that the transaction we had when we actually called NT create transaction is the one that is now passed to the create NT create on Nisman function. So now that we are into NT create on Nisman X, we're just going to step over the TM create on Nisman call. So now the question is, where is our Enlistment. So if we print again the K transaction, we can see that now an instant head contains one entry. And before that, before the call, it was actually empty. So now there is one enlistment. So, so how do we print the enlistment head? So we know this point to the single entry. If we actually try to print that at the K enlistment, let's see what happens. It doesn't look like it's valid, right? Because the cookie doesn't match. So let's have a look at the actual structures. We're interested in the K transaction. The K transaction has a list of enlistments. So we are also interested in the K enlistment. If you look at the K enlistment, the K enlistment actually has two lists. One of K enlistment being part of the same transaction and another one of K enlistment being part of the same resource manager. So what could the enlistment head point to? Well, actually, it's going to point to the enlistment, but in the middle of the enlistment. So it's going to point to offset 78. So here, instead of printing the key enlistment for, at this address, we need to subtract 78. So let's do that. Here we can see it aligns correctly with the cookie and the enlistment is valid and active. The actual lists are also valid pointers. The notification mask is 39FFF something and it matches the notification mask that we used. And the flags are zero. So we have now confirmed the creation of the enlistment and that the enlistment is linking the transaction and the resource manager. So this confirms what NT create enlistment is doing. So now we're going to continue execution. So we hit the NT commit complete X function. So this function, we're going to skip all the checks of the arguments. We see here it's retrieved the enlistment object based on the handle. And finally, it called the TM commit complete function. So we're going to set a breakpoint on TM commit complete with control F2. And we're going to delete the third breakpoint that we don't need anymore. We're going to continue execution. So we can check that RCX, which is the enlistment object, is actually matching the K enlistment that we showed earlier. So to do that, we can do So here the problem is that it's actually interpreting the numbers incorrectly. Right, so yeah, here I had to specify 0x in front, even though normally in most commands it, it interprets the numbers as hexadecimal. In the question mark command, it doesn't. So I had to actually specify that it's an hexadecimal number, so it computes the right value. And we can confirm that this k enlistment is the one we were looking at earlier. So 
this is equivalent to using this address. So at that stage, before calling tm commit complete, we can see the enlistment is the, is the enlistment delegated state. Also, if we look back at the k transaction, we can see the transaction is in the state delegated. So what we're going to do is we're going to step over that call and see what happens. So if we look again at the K transaction, hey, cool, it worked. The outcome is committed. We managed to commit the transaction. But before that, the outcome was undetermined. So that works. So we, we managed to commit the transaction just by committing the single enlistment that is part of the transaction. So let's analyze the K enlistment as well. Yeah, that works as well. The key enlistment is committed, which I guess is expected because we know the transaction was committed anyway. Okay, so to summarize, we managed to create a transaction, create an enlistment associated with the resource manager and that transaction, and then wait for the transaction to be committed. And then we committed the enlistment and that co actually committed the transaction because the transaction only holds one enlistment. Okay, thank you for watching.